Oh, it's my fresh out of the shower hair. Hi, everybody. See the amateur historian. Get your jetpacks set to go because I got a fun one for you, something I haven't done by itself in a while, and I know y'all love it when I do these. I'm cutting through the uh, rose quarter at the moment. Uh, just trying to get to the other side for a, a new installment. Look at that guy. Of, oh, he's gone. Of, oh, he's back. Uh, Portland, then and now. Hopefully that won't mess with me too much, but for the most part, today's venture is going to be focused uh, hitting up some spots in the Elliott and Boyce neighborhoods. I know it's spelled Boise, but it's pronounced Boyce, just like Cooch Street is spelled like couch, but it ain't a couch. Um, and I might venture a little ways over in Irvington as well, hitting up a collection of spots, but the first spot I want to hit up is a spot along Flint Avenue, just right up over there. And um, yeah, this first spot, the uh, the picture I'll be comparing will be, uh, well, the land there doesn't look anything like it did in this picture. Now, mind you, this picture was taken over a century ago. Uh, here's what, here's the uh, picture for comparison's sake. It's a picture of this house. Um, from 1903 and it was at the address of 1936 North Flint Avenue. Well, I mean, while I'm on the way, um, I only know this because I had to figure out where the specific location was. Um, for another picture comparison, um, obviously the Rose Quarter, well, I mean mostly when they built Veterans Memorial Coliseum over there first and then Rose Garden Moda Center came later, but this used to be a lot of little businesses and mostly residential. And more or less, where this little stretch of road is here in this little grassy park space, right here, and I'm gonna stick the picture in now, more or less where this row of houses, a lot of them look like apartment houses, they were all located right here. And I mostly remember that because of a um, film I did about a woman whose body turned up in the uh, river um, south of here in Oak Grove back in 1946 and a woman that uh, some people, myself included, feel was probably a woman named Anna Schrader and she lived in one of the apartment houses right here. And then that uh, little building, well not little building, but that building over there is where a guy named Daniel Harmon Jones climbed up on the roof and started sniping people, sniping at people. It's kind of regarded, I guess, as one of Portland's most famous sniping incidences. So there's a lot already going on in this area as I try to get to my first location. But yeah, this is it's just something else. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about the fact that I'd be passing through here. But yeah, there's just a row of apartment houses here because this whole area is mostly residential. And it's unfortunate. A lot of people got their homes just kind of stolen out from underneath them so they could build the Memorial Coliseum over here. So here's where Flint starts. It just kind of branches off of Broadway. And oh, this is a prime area. I thought maybe there might be, I guess see a tent set up right where I wanted to be. But this home, uh, you know, it's a picture of the, the family home. And it was at 1936. And you can see in the pictures, you know, it's a beautiful house. And you got the family there, but you can see it's like, level ground there's even like a kind of a it almost looks like an elevated like hedge there's a lot of like greenery right behind them well <laughs> this area don't look nothing like that today so according to where that address was use this gutted out jeep as a marker the house would have been standing over the land where this this is like a, um, 
an on-ramp, I believe. Or no, an off-ramp, because traffic's going this way. So the house would have been literally right here, except the land would have been, you know, about this level, not way down there. But more specifically, I was looking over the edge there so I wouldn't have this fence in the way. 1936, <laughs> 1930, 1936 North Flint would have been like right here. So literally the view we would have had of the family home, it would have been right here. Now, it's just this. It's all gone. It's wild what, well, not even 100 plus years can do because they were constructing this during the 60s. So I don't know when the home that would have been right here was demolished. It could have been long gone before they even started. But obviously the land through here was a lot different. And I'm actually staying on Flint for a couple more blocks to get to my next location, which is gonna take us back, not quite as far, but fairly far. We're going back to 1937 for this one. All right, we're just a little ways down now. Um, approaching Flint ends up here at Russell Street. And I, um, oh yeah, and, there's actually this kind of beat to hell little building, if I'm correct. This used to be, it's, it says a Russell Street Dental Clinic, but this, uh, this used to be, if I'm correct, this is where the Portland branch of the Black Panthers, this was where their dental clinic was. All right, so this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna have to cheat in a little bit because this black van is like right where I need to be. Um, so I might crop the picture a little bit. Here's what the original looks like from 1937, 87 years ago. Um, but I got a cheap pass. Oh, and then I got a cheap pass the car too. Um, and that's actually this may be a little bit more accurate than I'm giving it credit for. This is. That same location today, there actually, a lot has changed. It may not look like it so much because there's like, you know, there's still a park here. And you know, the that billboard's gone. Uh, that would have been like right up over here. But one thing that's really changed over time is the hospital is up over here. And which is actually a good, transition because uh, as I've talked about and criticized many times and I'm hardly the only one uh, back in the well started in the 60s and then kind of culminated in the 70s um, the, the hospital over here the Emanuel Hospital they wanted to do this big massive expansion project and they kind of like the Memorial Coliseum where I was before they you know pretty much just stole these people's homes out from underneath them. But right here, this empty block, this used to be a major, like commercial, this was lined with commercial buildings. And I'm actually gonna show a few different Wait. angles. First things first, I gotta get across this street. Oh, <laughs> rarely changes that quick. Beep boop. So, it's so sad. There was like a really cool like place that used to be here. But I'm at Vancouver and uh, Russell. And again, this whole area used to be just lined with commercial buildings and they tore all them down for the expansion project. And then that expansion project, um, well, it didn't really go the way they wanted it to because they ran out of funding. And so because of that, ooh, hello. So because of that, this area that they were gonna, that they, you know, took the land for and we're gonna do a bunch of stuff with, you'll see today there's like nothing, there's still nothing here, like over 50 years later. But right by this intersection here, this is where there was a, a building was 
right here on this right here on the corner there was this little building here and it was actually where it was another like black panther like medical clinic was located in there and it was located right here at the end of where these larger buildings were get about as tight as i can this may be a little too tight but this is the kind of the more frontal view of the place I was kind of pausing and buying some time because there was a dude that looked like he thought I was filming him and he didn't look like he liked it. So I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm filming stuff that's not here anymore. And yeah, so there's actually two different angles um, that were caught of this building the same year. It had to have been right before it was demolished because it was the early 70s. And just a little further down, like literally a matter of a few steps. And yeah, there was to the um the ground floor uh it would be towards the right side that is where the black panthers um um i get it was a medical office i, I forgot off the top of my head exactly what it was for um but it was located in that portion of the building and yeah there was just there were there was just a whole bunch of commerce right here right up here this is williams and russell this is was like one of the primary like commercial hubs of Portland's black neighborhood because this is you know all technically the old Albina area and it's where um, a little over a hundred years ago all of you know Portland's black population that wanted to move to the east side of the river they were forced into this tiny little area and so th this became Portland's you know redlined black neighborhood and right in the middle of all of this was these these buildings here and right here at the corner was hill block it had this really cool dome at the top of it it was probably one of the most photographed things uh or buildings i guess you could say in this area and you can see in pictures of it the building just went way 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 down there and i the place i videoed before was right down at that corner buildings stretched down here and then they stretched off this way and so once they, the hospital up over there started snatching up this land and of course places around here started getting demolished and it wasn't just right here. This is just kind of the most remembered spot because it's, it's still, you know, it's still empty. So it kind of represents the absurdity of that whole thing. But there was various spots all around here that they were snatching up. And there's some pictures kind of showing this particular block around here looking just desolate and emptied out and it's probably because some of the pictures were taken after these places had already been vacated for demolition there also i guess used to be a theater in this building right here that i i don't know i just kind of read that somewhere along the line wanted to interject that but i want to get an angle to represent a particular picture that was taken along this stretch so i'm down at this is Williams and Knott. So I'm one block down from Russell. And here's the field. And the picture that I'm going to show you shows all the commercial buildings that used to be here. Lines up just about like this. And you can see all of the all of the buildings and you can just see there's nothing there. They're all they're all vacant. And it's probably because they were not that far away from getting demolished. But you can see there was like all this stuff that used to be here. And now it's just, it's just this. It's just a, just a grassy field that they sometimes kind of maintain, but not too great. And all for this project that just didn't quite happen. And I am zigzagging all over the place because I eventually want to go back up Williams over there, but before I do that, I want to venture a little bit more towards Old Town Albina. Uh, or what's, no, sorry, <laughs> what still exists of Old Town Albina, which is right down, just a few blocks down Russell Street here. I do love coming down here though. Although the last time, one of the last times I came through here, I was coming down Vancouver, just a couple blocks up there. This guy menaced me with a baseball bat. I didn't love that, but I mean, I guess you gotta take the bat with the good sometimes. 
I hoofed it the hell out of there. But yeah, so this little stretch of kind of historic Albina, it's a couple blocks where some buildings that date back to the turn of the century still exist. You gotta veer under the freeway and once you pop out on the other side of the freeway, you're just there. things I love about this area beyond its historic um, elements is that it's kind of just peppered in this little almost hidden area on the other side of the freeway. It's just kind of peppered between there, the railroad yards, the river, and then all this industrial stuff over here. And then you've just got this quaint little, little, little chill area up here. So the picture in question goes back to 1974 and it's going to be a bummer for me because there's a building in this picture that looks like it was in a lot better shape back then which makes sense it was 50 years ago um, but I understand it's recently been torn down and it's one of those buildings I loved specifically because in these later years it was so gloriously beat to hell it was like barely standing all right so I'm gonna act I'm not gonna go that far actually there are no cars coming how lucky can you get so, this, maybe zoom a little bit. This is about the view, because we're a little bit out in the street. The trees, like a lot of things, are blocking a lot of um, what we would normally be seeing. But this is what it looks like today. And this is still here, this building you can see on the side. And you can see, you can't see it now because it's blocked by trees, but the brick building you see kind of in the left distance is this building that's popping out from behind the trees. And that one building that's right past this was the cool old beat to hell building that used to be right here. And I will miss it dearly. It was so, oh, I mean, I can't even put it into words how gone to hell it was. I fully understand them tearing it down. I don't think it had been used for anything for a long time. Yeah, so I'm gonna head just a little way, just right down here to get another uh, picture. And here's the, um, God, what is this place called? I forget, there's a lot of history to this place. Um, historic something block. I've God, why, how could I forget what this building was called? But yeah, I did a pretty long documentary about uh, Case of the Bones in the Dance Hall, which is a story that happened literally pretty much right where this little green building is now. Only there used to be a little dance hall back here behind this building. I'm, I've got to remember what this building is called. I'm going to lose my mind. I know it's on the front. Let's see if I can remember it before I get there. Can I remember it before I get there? Can I remember it before I get there? Oh, it was built in 1890. I remember the Davis Block. That's what it's called. I saw the sign. I admit I looked at the sign. Um, and yeah, you can see there's just like a handful of cool buildings just kind of peppered in here for a few blocks. But before heading further north, because I'm currently going south, I'm going to get a couple angles uh, right up over here. There used to be a really cool uh, building that stood on the corner up here, and I got two pictures of it. One image capturing it in 1929 from a certain angle, and one capturing it in 1945. And even if you look at the pictures, you can see um, there's been like alterations to the first floor level. All right, this is, this is gonna be a little rough. There's a lot going on down here. Because I do need to get across the street. It's the building in question, which is no longer here, is... Well, it was, it was right here. <laughs> Just gotta get to the right spot. So I made it to the other side of the street. I'm trying to get as wide a, man, whoever took this picture definitely had a wide, a wide lens. Okay, so. This is about the angle because you can see the building you can see a little bit of off to the right is still here. It's just been drastically altered over time. But this is about the view. So you can see the building that was there is no more. It just seems like it's kind of a general construction spot today. 
I'm barely able to fit that same view in with all my uh, phone here, but uh, don't really have a whole lot more to back up into. <laughs> So that is, this is the 1929 view. Now I also have a 1945 view that's a little bit closer, but for the sake of safety, I think pretty much the view in this next picture would have been taken more or less from like right near this crosswalk right here. And I did, I just realized I made a mistake. The first image I showed, that's the 1945 view. And you can see streetcar tracks in the picture, which is interesting because they're pretty much crossing the same area that the Max tracks here are crossing today. But that angle there, that was 1945. That's the later view. And the next view that is from roughly here, that is the 1929 view. And yeah, they absolutely had to have altered Albina Avenue here because things just are looking quite different. So trying to get as tight as I can. And this is pretty close to the view of the building as we see in this picture here. Um, I, it may have been taken from a little bit right of me, but there is a parking lot right there. Um, so I'm trying to get as close as I can. I don't want to, I mean, not that there's a lot of stuff going on here today, but um, if the road wasn't altered, the picture would have had to have been taken from a little bit more over here. So, I mean, I guess I can give you both views. It just seems like based on the 1945 picture that Albina was maybe coming in a little bit more of an angle this way than this way like it is today. But just in case I'm wrong, here's kind of another approximate view. Maybe syncs up a little bit better, maybe it doesn't. I just feel like it, because it, it doesn't look like in these old pictures, Albina really curved that much. Once it came down to what is interstate now, it was Larrabee back in 1929. You don't really see this sharp curve. Um, so this curb could have also then gone further out and the building could have been more in this area once upon a time. And yeah, so this was Larrabee right here. Um, and it later became Interstate Avenue. And yeah, it's the route that, as you can see, the uh, yellow and orange line travel along today in streetcar. Streetcar used to go through here. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I am now ah, traversing. I'm going to walk several blocks north, kind of go to the... Um, up, upwards towards where Fremont Street is, which is a succession of blocks north of here. So I've decided, I feel like it's the simplest route to take. I'm gonna walk up Mississippi Avenue. So I wanna get back over to Vancouver, but I don't wanna walk through the area where that dude chased me with that bat one time. And I've had a few people up around Dawson Park, which is just a couple blocks north, which is where the Hillblock Dome, the dome to the building was relocated. So it's still around, but I've had a couple people mess with me and kind of a couple people lurk and follow me and I'm not, I'm not into it. So I'm gonna go up Mississippi, which cuts under all this freeway stuff. And um, because I keep passing over places I previously covered in videos, the uh, murder of Barbara Holtzman documentary that I did, the rooming house she was killed in, or at least left in, was right where this parking lot is today. A lot of murders have happened in this tiny little stretch of still, you know, remaining historic Albina. It's been at least like five or six murders I've dug up in the deep past that have just happened like in this, in kind of like a nine block area. And then the, literally like right over there uh, is where the bones under the dance hall case happened so everything's just happening right next to each other and even though this is a Portland then and now video I'm Steve the amateur historian and I want to bring you little tidbits of history here and there here comes the wind either for new people or people that have watched my content are like oh yeah I remember that video I remember that stuff anyway onward we go north all right 
I just realized I'm passing another school, the Boyce Elliott School. And I realized earlier when I was getting the view of the um, Flint and Russell, and I was like, oh, I'm passing by a school. Meaning, like, you know, I don't want to, like, you know, be filming school. I just remembered it's Saturday today that I'm filming this. <laughs> so I think I'm fine. Anyway, I'm on Fremont Street finally. As much as I love that little kind of sneaky underground, under all the freeway overpasses climb up Mississippi Avenue, it is all uphill. And, um, yeah, I, I mentioned passing by where um, Barbara Holtzman was found dead. She lived um, on Borthwick, which is the street I'm now crossing. Um, she lived off of Borthwick and Fremont. She lived about, she lived about, about a block up the street there. And, you know, probably took me about 10 minutes to walk from there where she was found to here. So, pretty close. Bingo for be, be. Anyway, I love these schools. I just love the way they look. This is, you know, all the schools where I, you know, because I went to school outside of Portland and all the schools are a little bit newer and some of them are okay. They got like brick to them, but then you've got schools like this actually in Portland and like, you know, sure a lot, you know, a lot of them have needed to be renovated over the years. The trade-off is that a lot of them are kind of old and run down and need a lot of work, but they're just so pretty. Anyway, just a couple blocks down here is um, Fremont and Vancouver. I've wrapped back around to Vancouver Avenue. I want to get a view that syncs up with a uh, 1937 photograph of that area. Ah, there we go. Vancouver, next signal. So the picture in question is, it says it's looking east on Fremont, which I'm currently walking east on Fremont. So I know that the location where this picture was taken was on the south side of Fremont, filming east, and thus we're on the west side of its intersection with uh, Vancouver. This is another one. The street's kind of tight here, so I feel like the... The sidewalk has probably been um, stretched out. This road is probably wider through here once upon a time. That's just my guess. And this, this area, this intersection doesn't remotely look the same anymore. So you can probably guess this structure wasn't here in 1937. But this, this right here, Actually, I need to get a little bit, just a little bit closer, a little bit tighter. I guess I would be cropping the picture a little bit. But this is, this is a view of that same spot today at Vancouver and Fremont, like 87 years later. I may just have to kind of fit the picture in a little bit because it's definitely not the same like focus as me, but like this new season's building ain't that old. You can see a Richfield sign sticking out right here. So this intersection obviously had a gas station once upon a time. Wait. Uh, but the building that you can see, I don't think they refurbished it to make this new seasons. Maybe they did, but I mean, you can see uh, it's been drastically altered in this particular area over the years. And so very little looks remotely the same. Even if this picture was from the 80s, if I showed you what it looked like here during the 80s, it probably still wouldn't look remotely the same. And the next spot I'm going to is not too far away because the next street down is Williams here because Williams and Vancouver run um, parallel and I'm still by the new seasons. And Williams, which is this crossing street, is the uh, what bisects uh, Northeast and North Portland. Just for those who don't know, I for some reason thought it was Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard for a long time, but no, it's actually Williams right here. Another area, I mean, we're just one block off of Vancouver, but another stretch that has changed oh so drastically um, here along Williams, making it damn near impossible for anybody to live over here. And this, I think, used to be one of the more economically feasible areas, but when Stuff like this starts coming up all over town. It gets harder and harder to afford to live here. Is that abandoned house still here? 
Last time I was here, they were building around it. They're still doing construction, so I don't know. It would be, yeah, I see the roof of it, because I don't know if I can get back there. But yeah, there's this house that's been boarded up over here for a long time, and it used to be just this place, but now they're building this, and it's just like meshed in between the two here. I knew I'd be passing that. But I'm trying to get to, I'm actually very close. And this this build, little building here maybe even pops up in it. Is this still open? I wonder if this is another, might be, I don't know. But uh, Fargo and Williams, right here, Fargo and Williams. This is right where I want to be because I got two pictures from two different perspectives, both from the wonderful, I don't know why I'm saying it like I know, the wonderful year of 1964. And here is our first view. I am unfortunately having to cheat over a bit because the picture's taken from along the sidewalk and I cannot access the sidewalk currently because of this fence here. But this is a 1964 view looking north on Williams, just south of Fargo Street. So you can see Fargo Street crossing in the foreground. But this is more or less that same view today. And you can see nothing. Nothing is still here. The house off that would have been across the street, not there. There's a clinic there. You can see that there was like a building here with a business. Um, before this, this was just an empty spot for a long time. And yeah, I can actually see through here. There's that abandoned house right there. I don't know if it's fully abandoned. I mean, if it's still there, obviously somebody doesn't want it torn down, but I love that it's still just standing there, surrounded by all of this other stuff. And for our next view, we are literally gonna walk right across the street. So here is a view from the east side of Williams, just south of the uh, Fargo intersection crossing. Now, what is still here is you can, it looks like it's, it was a barbecue place, but you can still see this building here. It was just nestled in between like several other buildings. And um, it's the last one standing and it's still standing there. I'm a little concerned. I don't know if it's really being used right now, um, but it's the one like, you know, discernible thing from that 1964 picture that's still there. But anyway, I'm trying to get to um, Stanton Street, just the other side of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Only probably uh, five, six blocks from here. It is pretty as hell through here. I love this little stretch. So this next one, I really love this place. It has been drastically altered, but as it is, as its structure, it is still around almost a hundred years after the particular picture that I'm gonna show was taken. So you get up to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, which is right ahead of me, and it's a commercial stretch. It's all commercial buildings now, pretty much, because it's a commercial stretch of road. So you see this picture of, you know, these big old houses here, and you think, how could anything that looks like that, like still be around along a commercial stretch of road almost a hundred years later? Well, here are those two houses today. Drastically altered, obviously. Uh, the middle's been kind of taken out. I gotta kind of zoom in a little bit to give you the full view. Uh, maybe it's a little bit further down, a little bit more like this. But these are the two houses. They've been connected. They used to be two big apartment houses by themselves. Um, and now they've been, the middle uh, upper portions are, have been removed and they've been connected um, as one here at Martin Luther King and Knott Street. And this used to be a fairly common thing to have two, they would build like multiples of the same type of apartment house um, side by side or back to back. It just depended on the circumstances of where they were building. But yeah, so you can see that like the parts that jutted out have been altered. And the space in the middle has been cleared out, so a one-story place can be put in the middle. But the first house is there, and the second house is there. Oh, that's a record store, too. And then this one almost kind of is similar in structure. Um, but, yeah. So you can see, like, you know, bricks been added at the... I mean, obviously, they've been altered. They're businesses now. But it's wild to see that picture and think that this, these places are still there. 
And in case you're curious, you may notice at the, at the bottom of the picture, there was, can I, uh, I'm not gonna try it, I'm not gonna try it. At the um, picture in front of the building, there's a guy holding a number. And that guy, I've always wanted to do a video about him. He was called the number man. There was, I think at least three of them that did this and they would stand in front of these various addresses and they held up numbers and they were like marking um, certain addresses. I haven't delved into it that much. So, cause I know there's some mystery, like some of these guys, we don't know who they were, like what their names were. They're just these guys. So that, yeah, there's a lot of mystery about that. And there's a lot of pictures depicting the, the number man, even though there was technically number men. Uh, depicting them, a lot of pictures taken end of the 20s, 1929, 1930-ish. Um, it was right around the time that Portland was um, doing their great renumbering, where they had to redo all the addresses because it was crossover with addresses as Portland was annexing other towns. They were starting to have random addresses would bump into addresses that didn't match across the street because they used to be two different towns with their own system. And sometimes you had repeats of certain addresses and it was just becoming just chaos. And so they had to renumber all the addresses. And that's when they established, you know, North Portland, Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, Southwest. And now there's a South Portland that's been added more recently. And that is also the same time that they were, and of course, because Burnside became the main street that bisected the North and South parts of town. And so down by the Willamette River, they started an expansion project, expanding both streets on each side of the Willamette River. And in one instance on the east side, they did a cool thing. They hollowed out the first portion of the ground floors and then had the, pretty much the ceiling of the first floor stick out over the sidewalk. So you had these covers to go under on the, that was on the east side of the river. On the west side of the river, they just hacked the fronts off of buildings so they could spread um, Burnside out. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why they didn't do the same thing with each one, but anyway, that's kooky history for you. Now for this next one, I, I have to say uh, the picture, there's no exact address given for the, the particular homes that show up in the picture. All I know is that it's on stand between MLK and 7th. And I'm pretty sure I found the home along that stretch that is in the foreground of the picture. It would have had to have been altered. Both that and the house next to it would have had to have been altered. But we are looking at I gotta check it. a photograph from 1968, so there's a lot of time to alter a home. Now I'm on Stanton, and in the picture you don't see anything that's over here, but I'm, these, yeah, I don't think these <laughs> dated. Well, actually, I, for some reason I thought I was reflecting on a 20s picture. No, no, no. This, some of this may have been here. These railings certainly look old enough. Oh, that looks like a cozy spot. But yeah, so I'm looking. Um, because I think it's the last three houses on that side of the street are the ones that show up in the picture and it's taken from this side. Um, so there's, is this the one? I think, not quite. I'm looking for a certain address that I'm not going to sell. Yeah, so it's these last ones over here. And uh, so it would have been kind of filmed because the sidewalk just barely shows up on the right edge of the picture. So I'm pretty sure this now kind of beige-ish house over here. Um, I'm pretty sure this syncs up pretty well with the image. Um, and just a little ways further down is 7th. So that's my guess, is that those are some of the houses you're seeing over here, and now we're coming to 7th Avenue. It's interesting, as I'm walking along, I'm trying to get to my next location, this is 8th Avenue. Um, but if you look here, because it used to be streets, these the numbered ones weren't avenues, but it only says 8. <laughs> the H is missing, it just says 8th Street. <laughs> eh, you know. 
just feel like I never stop and really take notice the way I should of those old marks on the streets that are old enough that they show like when streets had different names or when it was a street before it was an avenue or vice versa. I always notice the horse rings randomly sticking up out of the curbs on these sidewalks, but a lot of those old imprints on the concrete. As a historian, you'd think I would pay more attention to those, but I'm just paying attention to the homes now because I'm in, I'm in Irvington now, now that I'm on the I'm on the east side of MLK and south of Fremont. You hear that? Neither do I. The sounds of peace and quiet ruptured by the sound of my voice. On my way, I just found, this is definitely, I'm pretty sure this is another old one. Cause you see an E over here and then an N over here. Now, some places they put the direction, north, south, east, west, south, east, whatever. They have it at the end. In Portland, it's before the, the number in the street. So this is, so this represents East 12th Street North, which is pretty much a way of saying it's, we're in the Northeast, which is, accurate we're in northeast portland but that's got to be an old one big that that because that whole putting the north or the south or whatever after the number that stopped being a thing after the great renumbering which again happened i think in 1931 so it's probably that old or when they redid it they did an homage to how things used to be but somehow I don't think that's what happened here anyway I'm trying to get to let's see northeast 17th and Tillamook and this is going to be kind of a fun one it's a little bit different there's another one east 12th street north now I'm getting obsessed but no, the reason this next one, oh my god, I freaking love this neighborhood. I mean, look at this. If I, you know, just everything fell into line, where in Portland would I want to live? It's Irvington. It's always been Irvington. Since I got to know all of the neighborhoods around town, I've always wanted, I would pick this place over anything. Laurelhurst, Selwood, various parts of Southwest. I freaking love it here. Uh, I get more of an, I get more escapism from this than... Uh, you know, three-hour fantasy movie could ever do. But anyway, um, you know, usually the pictures I take are of, you know, famous intersections, old buildings that may have been there. There's like, you know, there's structure, there's architecture there. In this case, it's just kind of a goofy tree kind of sticking up and messing with the sidewalk. Um, but it's one I really had to kind of search around um, Google Maps for, and I was about to abandon it because I couldn't find anything that was showing because all I knew was that it was near 17th and um, Tillamook but was it on the east side the west side the north side the south side I didn't know and I finally was able to figure it out so it's one of those things where there's not really a whole lot of landmarks to guide you in the right direction but there was one this is Tillamook and 17th I'm on Tillamook I'm about to turn off on to 17th and yeah so it would have been the tree in question. I feel like this is a little bit bigger than it used to be, perhaps. But yeah, it would have been kind of right here is where the tree would have been. So, I mean, I'd have been right. It would have been like, kind of, I mean, wider view than me, but... It would have been like kind of right about here. So maybe a little bit past where the, the sidewalk kind of cuts over a little bit. That's where that big tree would have been sticking up out of the ground. It, it's such a nondescript thing, um, but I thought it fit really well. And the main reason that I know it was right here to the exclusion of other spots, especially considering this is a picture from 1969 is when it was from, is in the background just just to you know off here you can see this big white house and you can particularly see uh and it's it's a big house but you can particularly see like um dead end but you can particularly see that part of the house sticking out 
I'm making it like I'm filming the dead end sign because, you know, I am about filming, you know, around where people live. But yeah, the tree, you know, somewhere, somewhere here at 17th and Tillamook. And the next spot I'm trying to get to is not that far from here. Actually, probably like three or four blocks. Um, this kind of takes down the classiness of the neighborhood a bit. But anyway, next up, going to, did I say going? Going. Oh, hello, squirrel. I'm going to 15th and Shiloh. 15th and Sh oh my god, I love this place. I always forget this place is here. Um, 15th and Shiler. There's uh, an apartment building at this corner. I got the elevation for the parking. And it's like most pictures that I do um, follow ups to. So this is 1965 is when this was done. So the main thing that's different in all of these pictures is that there's more trees now. That's just about it. But yeah, here's in a kind of an approximate view of what the place looks like today. It's pretty much the same. Um, just a lot more trees. And this is 15th and Shiler. Kind of getting more towards the southern end of Irvington because it borders on Broadway, and Broadway is this light right here. But I'm not quite done. I'm almost done. So I'm on Hancock. Oh, I think this is it up here. I was about to say, is it, is it gone? Because I just crossed 21st and it said 22nd. Blocks are longer out here. But no, I'm coming up on what I wanted to see. So, okay, no confusion. So, this is going to be a photograph from 1961 showing a certain type of apartment building. You see them kind of peppered in certain areas. Um, Irvington is one of them. You kind of, I feel like I see, you see some of these down around this type. You see them down around like Belmont and Hawthorne. And they're these, these kind of, you know, seemingly from the back here, kind of nondescript apartment buildings, but they're kind of um, almost like a V shape. And from the front, they're like, they're really awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure I just have to cross 22nd and that'll be the view that the picture depicts. Oh, and here's the, uh, the iconic White House. This is a really famous building here too, and it's just diagonal across the street. Because if you do a perfect turn, here is that same apartment complex, a little over, wait, so this is 1961. So this is, count trying to do my math, so 63 years later, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. It just, hi there. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, as usual, the only thing that's different is there's a, there's a big tree here now. It's like the only thing that's changed. Seems to be the case for everything. And, and yeah, then there's just the White House. I feel like... I've talked about this with my wife. We feel like a lot of like eyes wide shut stuff has kind of happened inside these this place. Anyway, that was that was where I was planning on ending. But because I'm already traveling east to catch the max to get home, I will be passing one more spot. So I figure what the hey, I'll give you one more thing before I go. So I got one more spot I'm gonna show you because I was gonna be passing it anyway. And so why not? And I'm gonna have to cheat this first angle a little bit because it is taken from right in the middle of Broadway here and um, I ain't doing that. Always love this place up here. It's got its charm, but right up here, this is, I believe it's 33rd and Broadway. And it's the site of where Gordon's Fireplace Shop used to be, which I always remember seeing when we'd pass by it on the freeway. And, Long time ago, it was like an airplane parts manufacturer. Way, way, way back. But it was Gordon's for a long time. And unfortunately, since that place is shut down, there's been talk about 
revitalizing it for something, but it's kind of just been sitting here and with the passage of time, you know, another window gets broken out every other week and it's just, it's just, ooh, free food. <laughs> so, no, I probably need to be like right there. So I'm gonna, you know, be on the curb to kind of show you this, this angle best I can. So I'm not even really gonna even try to match it that well. But it's probably, cause yeah, I'd probably have to be like right there. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. But, so yeah, 33rd is the crossing. And then Broadway is, well, the one that's going this way. And this image I have is from 1930. So this is, it's almost, almost 100 years ago. And while more or less the street setup looks the same, it's um, really the only thing that's, I don't know, those houses may have been there, but you see Gordon's off to the side. And of course, you don't see as much of the front from here because I'm not as far out in the street. But yeah, the Gordon's shop there. It still has the old Gordon sign, even though it's been closed for a few years. But this is, you know, fairly close to the angle from 1930. And before I part ways, there, there's another angle I want to show you that was taken from right next to the fireplace shop. So yeah, here's the, here's the state of the fireplace shop. Uh, but yeah, there's, this next image is from 1953 and it's actually most of the stuff that's in the picture, I stand corrected. Um, most of the stuff from the picture is still here. So it's probably taken from, you can kind of see a window in the foreground before these ones. So it's probably right here. And all of the houses across the street, um, I think pretty much all of them are still there. Cause that house there, that is definitely the one that's the closest to us in the picture. And you can see um, in the background, the one there's a window facing us. That's that kind of yellowish one down there. So yeah, most of the stuff in the picture is still here, as is a bunch of burned out trash. So yeah, it is It is kind of a shame that this, this it, well, it's just been sitting here. They keep saying they're gonna do something with it and then nothing happens. It seems to be kind of the running thing. You know, oh yeah, no, 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 we're gonna do something, I promise, I swear, we're gonna do something. And then it sits here and then eventually they say, well, we tried and then it gets demoed for, you know, a new building that no one's going to use or, you know, new housing that nobody can afford to live in. It's kind of the, the same old junk around here, but it's still, it's still a cool place. And I've, I've been past here. I've gotten some video here and there of this place. And so it's a nice spot to kind of go out on. I'm going back this way. There was a guy, there was a bunch of like trash back there. There's a guy like beaten down, hammering on like a, a lawnmower that he probably stole because it looks brand new. But yeah, sad, sad state of Gordon's fireplace shop that just it's not getting the, the love and the care that it deserves.